<laughs> but I am ready for first in football because it'll yeah. change the topic. Will and you? we have that man, Russell Wilson. He's been doing some interviews and he talked about how excited he is to play for Mike Tomlin. And here's what he said, and I quote, to be able to play for Mike Tomlin, to stand side by side with him and try to accomplish all the goals that I want to accomplish with the Steelers organization and what that represents for the NFL is one of the greatest gifts yeah. in the world. Yeah. Will Tomlin and new OC Arthur Smith bring Russell Wilson back to peak performance? I think he's going to have a great year, but he didn't do an interview with Essence when Pete Carroll was his coach. Amen. That's that I can, that I, that's that, weird. That I can remember. That's why I'm just huh. asking the questions. Uh, look, uh, he, th he knows what he's doing. Yeah. He's buttering the coach up and ain't going to mean a damn thing because <laughs> the first time he makes a bad read in practice, Tom's going to chew his ass out, mm -hmm. which he should. That being said, I do think you have a, a, a kind of revitalization of Russell's career after the debacle in Denver the last couple of years with Sean Payton. And, I, I mean, I can't be any more consistent about this. The Pittsburgh Steelers have a chance to win this division this year. And not just because of Russ, but a big part of it is because now you get legitimate quarterback play, which they've not had really since Roethlisberger left there, what, yeah. three years ago now. Kenny Pickett, not very good. Trubisky, you know the story. Yep. So I think by default they're better offensively. They brought in a bunch of weapons. Defensively, adding Patrick Queen to that defense. And don't sleep on Johnson, the cornerback, uh, who they traded for Deontay Johnson. You have two stud cornerbacks now between Porter Jr. and Johnson. You've got a badass middle linebacker now. And you've got a legitimate, competent quarterback. I'm not saying the Steelers are a lock to win it. Right. But I will tell you that that division, more than any other division right now in the moment, is absolutely up for grabs and all four teams can win it. Because yeah. when you go to the other divisions, that's not the case. And all four teams can finish last. All yeah. four teams have a chance to either come in last or win that division. And that's why I will not be able to get enough of the AFC North this year. It's going to be great. Yeah, I just want Russell not to mess it up. You know what I mean? Like, come as advertised. Well, like, let me just stop just... you on that, if I may. Yes. My friend who played for the Steelers, and I read the quotes in Essence there, not because I read Essence all the time. What but, you you know, say? When I go to, when I go to the When I go to the barbershop, I read Essence. That's what I do. High um, and tight? What it, uh, what I, do, I, do, I do have a subscription. The barbershop? I have a subscription to Jugs, but oh, you yeah. know, not to Essence. The, that, yeah, the, yeah, yeah my man, you. that's right. Yeah, yeah, Jugs machine. Jugs machine. Yeah, yeah. I do. But here's the thing. Uh, and when he talks glowingly about the Steeler organization, rightfully so, right? And I totally respect that and the history of the organization. But if we're going to keep it real in the show, it's been a long time. It's been a long time with Mike Tomlin there where they advanced in the playoffs yes. and really made a run towards a potential Super Bowl. So while the organization historically comes with immediate respect, the Rooney family, oh, was it six Super Bowls, yeah. right? That's all real. But if we're going to keep it real, as great a coach as Mike Tomlin is, it's been a long time since the Pittsburgh Steelers were a real threat to win a Super Bowl. Yeah, and this is the last year of Mike Tomlin's contract, so I think the, 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 the need to win is right now. I think Russell Wilson just has to come out and just be the field general who he can be. I think under Arthur Smith, he's going to be protected because they're going to be a run-first offense. Right. This won't be yeah. a situation where he sits in a well and he just dinks and dunks all day. It's going to go through Jalen Warren and Najee Harris, and they're going to play behind that defense. For Russell Wilson, by all accounts, man, just stay out of your own head, right? Like, understand, just play quarterback. We don't need you to be the mayor. We yep. don't need you to be the president. We don't need you to be the face of the franchise. Just win. Right. And they'll love you. And by the way, he's good enough to do that. Speaking of jugs, do you <laughs> Yes. Do you remember the first time you found your dad's jugs magazine? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was a great yeah. day, right? Yeah, it's like, my dad's the man. Yeah. Right. Right the best. And I also felt this. I really don't know anything about my father. Yeah. Yeah, when you find that, he yeah. had a gun and a bunch of, like, you know, smut magazines <laughs> under his mattress. Did he have a tie? Yeah. I was like, I don't even know this man. <laughs> True story. They're telling me to we move had, on. I don't had, know why. He had two yeah. loaded uh, pistols under the mattress yeah. and a bunch of jugs magazines. So what were you doing looking under the mattress? Yeah. Obviously, yeah. looking for what he was hiding. <laughs> yeah. I was like, my guy. All right. I, I didn't learn to respect it until much later in life, but yeah. now it makes sense. I got moving it. on to second in football. We are uh, staying in the state of Pennsylvania, moving on to the <laughs> NFC. Um, Just interesting man. news. Devontae Smith and the Eagles are working towards an extension. Great. They don't have to give him extension, but it sounds like they are. Do you think they should lock Devontae Smith up long-term? Yeah, I mean, of course. <laughs> See, like, sometimes these questions are silly. 
Uh, not that you came up with them, just in general. Oh, okay. Are you not a, in the pre meeting? <laughs> no, nah, because pre meetings are stupid. Yeah. Uh, because here's the deal of course they should lock him up long term. He's not a good wide receiver, he's a great wide receiver. And the notion of teams not taking care of their town and locking them up, quote unquote, you know, to lengthy extensions to keep them in the mix during the prime athletic years of their careers is stupid, which is why we've spent so much time trying to figure out what the Dallas Cowboys are doing with C.D. Lamb, low-hanging fruit, yeah. right? Uh, Dak Prescott, Micah Parsons. Like, the Eagles signing him is smart. It's also called doing business, you know, not even special business. We have a great talent. The guy's been money good since he came out of college. He's answered every you know, question mark. He's checked every box. He's a great wide receiver. He's also a great compliment, of course, to A.J. Brown on the other side of the field. He's a money guy. He goes up and gets every 50-50 ball, and you can trust them. So to me, why wouldn't you sign Devontae Smith? I, I guess the question would be is if you look at down there, the third behind Hill and Lamb, Will he get paid like a number one receiver, even though he doesn't get the sort of targets that Brown? No. Well, don't forget, AJ. They they they, they inherited AJ Brown's contract via trade. Like they they're not the ones that gave AJ Brown the contract he got. But Devonte Smith deserves mid twenty million dollars a year. He's a top ten wide receiver in the NFL, and I'm I've said it a million times. And this isn't like anything new. We all believe it. When I've got a great talent, I want to keep that talent. So you sign the guy, you give him the five years, you guarantee him 50, 60 million bucks, you give him 27 a year, all good, let's move on to the next guy. Yeah, I, listen, I, I get the fact that you trust him because he's extremely durable. Like, he's only missed one game in three seasons. So at the end of the day, you, there's a lot of money invested on that one, uh, one side of the ball. What was the problem with the Eagles last year? Defense. They need help. Yeah. They have a depleted yeah. linebacker core. They have nothing in secondary that you can put your hat on. And right now, the, outside of Bryce Huff, what addition that they added to make this defense better besides Vic Fangio? So you talk about all the additions. Mind you, they signed their left tackle. Uh, Mulata, you got Dickerson, and, and you talk about Saquon on and on and on. My thing is like, yeah, you got an offense. What the hell? Are you, who are you going to stop? Because you got to be able to play defense. Yeah, look, they, their defense took a hit, especially like Fletcher Cox retiring. Obviously, now they do bring Bryce up and um, their safety. Uh, you know, some question marks there depth wise. Uh, they're not a great defensive team. I think everyone no. owns that right now. But man, offensively, you know, I would take their offensive skill position weapons. Understanding that they do lose Jason Kelsey, so the offensive line probably takes a bit of a hit as far as what they've done over the last couple of years. But Lane Johnson's coming back. Yeah. He's probably the best, you know, right, right tackle. tackle in all football. To me, I would take, you know, Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown, Saquon Barkley, and their tight ends and put them up against damn near any team in football. I don't the question that, mark yeah. to me is, what is Jalen Hurts? Jalen Hurts has had the one great year. Yep. He regressed last year. You know, they still made the playoffs, of course, and then lost. If Jalen Hurts is even 90% of what he was two years ago, the Eagles are winning the division and on a fast track to seeing San Francisco in the NFC Championship game. And they haven't even played a game yet. But I did tell you three months ago they'd be playing in Brazil to start the you year off against are. the Green Bay Packers. Does anybody really want to see that game? Yeah. I do, because it yeah. means that would, football is back. I want, yeah. I want to watch the crowd. I caught him in Brazil. You're yeah, right. yeah, I like Brazil. I want a crowd watch. Yeah. You got a crowd watch? Yeah. You, you know, they invented a whole waxing thing there. Yeah. I don't know if you guys are aware of that or not. Yeah. It's a very famous. Um, Should the Detroit media be more positive about the success that Jared Goff and the Lions have had? By the way, they were the sweetheart story yeah. of the year last year. They were celebrated because of their run to the playoffs and the NFC Championship game where they obviously lost to San Francisco. Like, what's he talking and about? Everybody loves Dan Campbell. Find yeah, me a football I mean, fan that doesn't love Dan Campbell. Right. Oh. Not just that. You went 30 years without winning a division title yeah. or even being in a playoff game. So shut up. How about that from 92 to 22? That's a 30-year run without a single playoff win. Of course they're That's negative. That's going to breed some yeah. negativity. <laughs> yeah. Like, how could you not be negative? You know, it's welcome to my world as a Jet fan. And I've had AFC Championship game appearances, you know, in the last 15 years. Two of them. You know, so, I, so I'm way ahead of the Detroit Lions. This is one of those moments where it makes me want to root against somebody. 
because Jared Goff, you're not a born uh, you know, Detroit guy. You got traded there as an afterthought because the Rams thought you weren't very good and they couldn't win a Super Bowl with you. And to your credit, you've resurrected your career and you won a division title. And oh, look, you know how to skip because that, that's what makes me happy as a football fan. My quarterback skips down the field. I don't like that at all. But if you want negativity, you know, be the Lions this year. You know, go, uh, go nine and eight this year and watch Green Bay or Chicago. Yeah. You know, take the division title. And trust me, you'll get all the negativity you want. Like Detroit fans, they're great people. They got dirty Bad. water, but great fandom. All right? Dirty water. And for a, a group of people that still go to that dump and watch the Detroit Lions play, despite having zero playoff wins over the course of 30 years, you should thank the Lions fans for caring about you playing football because they could have given up on you a very, very long time ago. I hate that. And I'll tell you something else. Memo to all you young athletes out there that are maybe going pro now for the first time or you're in the draft. The mob, in this case the fan base, yeah. we have never lost the game. And the dumbest thing you can do as a player is to attack the fan base because you don't know what it's like to spend 150 bucks on a ticket for a team that never wins. Sure. You don't know what it's like to plan your entire Sunday around your visit to the stadium, the traffic, the parking, the tailgating, the expense, and then the losing that comes with it. So my advice to you, Big Mouth, would be shut up. And embrace the fans. Never fight the fans because you're never, ever going to win that battle. Will yeah, you tell? Yeah, empathy always wins in this situation. I, I played the Detroit Lions, and I, when I played the Detroit Lions, the fans had brown paper bags on their heads, right? Like, so it was bad. So if I'm Jerry Goff, understand one thing. Yeah. As long as you continue to win, they will support you. That's but, it. And, and by the way, people in Detroit went to see your lousy franchise play, even if your, your original owner was an anti-Semite Nazi uh, sympathizer. And beyond that, they kept coming back anyway with the hope that one year you guys might win a playoff game which you never did with Barry Sanders, which you never did Stafford, with, uh, Megatron. With, with, with Megatron. Yeah. All right? So shut up and stop attacking the good, hardworking people of that dump of a city, Detroit. I, I mean, Detroit. that great city, Detroit. Great city, Detroit. Oh, okay. great yeah. City. Good and uh, I, I did make a, a political statement there about the Ford family, so my apologies. I used to drive a Ford, but now I drive a Chevy. There you go. There you go. Hey there. Thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1, so check them out too.